What's the beauty of another lead code SQL problem for you? This one's part of SQL 50, marked as medium. Let's get into it. So this one's called movie rating number 1341, marked as medium, and part of the subquery section in SQL 50. So that might be a hint. We have three tables to work with, one called movies, one called users, and one called movie rating. Movies is sort of a lookup table for movie information. It just has the ID of the movie and the title. So you can sort of look up the name if you have the ID. Then for users, it's a lookup table for users. And here we have the name for a user ID. Now movie rating is where it gets more interesting because here we have a movie ID, user ID, rating and created at. So this one tells us when a user left a rating for a movie, the actual rating in terms of a number and the date of when they made that review or that gave that rating. Our task is to write a solution to first find the name of the user who has rated the greatest number of movies. In case of a tie, return the lexicographically smaller username, basically the one that comes first in the alphabet. The second part of this question is to find the movie name with the highest average rating in February 2020. In case of a tie, return the lexicographically smaller movie name. So result format would look like this for the example input. So for movies, yeah, we just have a few movies, a few users and ratings. A few of those are in February 2020. Yeah, this one is not ordered by date, but we have a few in February. And the output would be one column called results, where we have the two answers to these two questions. So yeah, a bit of an unusual format. So in this case, it would be Daniel because Daniel is the user who has rated the greatest number of movies, who gave the most movie reviews. And since there was a tie in the data with Monica, Daniel is lexicographically smaller than Monica. So it comes first in the alphabet because it's also D instead of M for Monica. Similar thing for the movies where two movies have an average rating of 3.5 in February in the data, February 2020, but Frozen 2 comes first in the alphabet compared to Joker. So Frozen 2 will be the output here. So one output row per sub question here, and then we just append the results after each other. So that's why it's a bit of an unusual format. It's pretty much two questions in one here. And then we still want to have them as part of one output. The reason why there's two different questions here maybe is because, yeah, they're working with the same data, same sort of tables. But yeah, in terms of what we need to do, it's quite clear that we have to solve two different questions and then combine the output, combine it into one output column. So let's start with the first sub problem. Let's make that a comment here to work through that first. And then we can take, uh, take care of the second part. So first task is to find the name of the user who has rated the greatest number of movies. And then in case of a tie, we should take care of that. So in order to get the user who has rated the most movies, we will have to get the user ID and make it part of a group by then apply a count to how many ratings they they gave so in order to do that since we want the user's name as part of the output we will have to use the users table because this one has the name of the user otherwise we could have just used movie rating which has a user id and one row should be one rating they gave so yeah, technically to answer the question to get the user ID, we could just use this one table movie rating, but because we need the name of the user, we will also need users. So we have all parts, let's just think about how to bring these together. Let's get the user ID and the name of the user and then do that count. We can do count star here, assuming there are no duplicates. And yeah, we're selecting that from users and movie rating so we'll have to join them users join movie rating using user id so that's just a short form syntax that works in mysql and some other sql dialects this using for the join 
yeah, that works if both tables have the same column name that we're joining on. Yeah, so this should establish that link between the tables. Now we also need to group by the first two columns to make the count apply to user ID and name. So we want to calculate the count of ratings per user and per name because we also want name to be part of the output. And yeah, it said we want to, in case of a tie, return the lexicographically smaller username. So in order to get that in the right order, we're gonna use order by, order it by that count in descending order. And then if that is a tie, we will apply what comes after this comma. So the second order we will order by in case there's a tie in the first order column. The second column we will order by is the name in ascending order because that will order it alphabetically or lexicographically. So yeah, we can run this now to get sort of a partial output of what this would give us. And yeah, we will get a list of users, the name and how many reviews or ratings they gave. In this case, we have Daniel and Monica, which is what we discussed in this example output. And Daniel would be what we want in the output because that is what comes first in the alphabet. Yeah, so the order is correct because we just want one output row per sub question. We can use limit here, say limit one, which will just give us the first output row of what we just calculated. So this will just give us the row with Daniel in it. And yeah, that should take, uh, take care of the sub problem. So we have Daniel now. In order to just get Daniel, and uh, not the other columns, we can just select name from this subquery. That's maybe why this is part of the subqueries section in SQL 50. And let's call that users, just give it a name. And yeah, now we should be left with the first part of what we want in our output, the name of the person that gave the most ratings, which is Daniel. Yeah, nice. So the output column should be called results in the final output. So let's select the name as results and we have the first part of our output which is Daniel. Okay, so I'll get into the second question, but I wanted to discuss why I'm using user ID and name here when I just want to output name in the end eventually. So. I could just do a group by name here and omit user ID. So I'll just do account and group by name. And the question would also be accepted. I've tested this. But if you do this and there are two people with the same name, which is very likely to happen because there's more than one Daniel in each city even, I'd say. Yeah, if you have people with the same name, which have a different user ID, this would break, so I'm including user ID in the group by to make sure I'm counting correctly and then I'm selecting the name to get that as part of the output. Otherwise, I could just select name and then order by count star, not have it part of the group by. I would save myself using a subquery, but it would probably break, most likely break, so that is the preferred solution. I'm going to apply the same logic to the second part of this question which is the second bullet point here. So again, to recap, this one says, find the movie name with the highest average rating in February, 2020. In case of a tie, return the lexicographically smaller movie name. So same sort of tie situation here we need to handle, but yeah, this will be getting the movie with the highest average rating in February, 2020. So we need to calculate the average rating per movie ID then also get the movie title and make sure we filter to February 2020 when we do the average calculation. Then the same sort of ordering and limit one should give us the title of the highest rated movie in 2020, 
uh, in 2020. We have to sort of make sure we apply the same level of detail here by grouping by movie ID. If we did by title, there could be movies with the same title, the same name. So there could be T Titanic, the original version, and then a remaster in 2019. They would have the same title, but they would be different movies with the different movie IDs and uh, the code would break. So yeah, we're gonna apply the same structure here. It will look a bit pretty similar. So we will select movie ID title and the average rating from, yeah, we're gonna to have to use two tables here as well. So we have movie rating, which has the rating. So we'll have to use this one. This one has movie ID, but we also want the title. So we'll have to join movies, which has sort of the lookup for a movie ID, which gives us the, the title or the name of the movie. So very similar situation here. So we're selecting from movies, join movie rating. The order doesn't matter here because it's not a left join or anything. You can use the same using keyword, saying using movie ID. And yeah, we'll also group by the first two columns, movie ID and title to get the average rating. If we order by three, which is the average rating in descending order, the highest will be on top. And in case of a tie, we will do the same ordering based on title in ascending order, alphabetical or lexicographical order. Yeah, so that should take care of that. In order to make sure that the ratings took place in February 2020, we need to include a where filter here to make sure we're calculating the average only within that time frame, and then also group by user uh, movie ID and title. That's what we're doing already. But yeah, for this one, you could do created at between and then list the specific dates. So 2020 or two or one and 2020 or two 29. So one thing you need to keep in mind when you hear February, whenever you're working with um, date data is that February could be a What's the name? Year that has 29 days instead of 28. I'm sort of like blanking on the English expression for that sort of year. leap year. Yeah, it's leap year. So yeah, 2020 is actually a year that had 29 dates, uh, 29 days in February. And that happens every four years. If you have an even year, just be careful around that. So in this case, if I had 28 in here, it would be incorrect because one of the test cases probably had a rating on the 29th and the code wouldn't work. So yeah, you could do that. You could say in order to work around that easily, you could say left created at seven, which will output the first seven characters of the created at column. If it's a string, this one is a, well, it's a date, but it should, it should work in the same way where it just gives you the first seven characters and that would be 2020-02. And this would cover the case of a rating happening on February 29th. And that should be 2020-02. Yeah, to make it even more robust, if you had a different date format, then you could do, well, you should have that if it's a date type, but another way to do it is using date format and then supply your date column and the structure you want to extract. In this case, this syntax says percentage uppercase Y will give us the year in four character length and the month as digits. And we have that dash in between. Maybe that's too complicated, but that's what I usually use. That just formats the date to have this format of year dash month. And that should be 2020 or two 
as well. So a couple of different ways to solve this. Just make sure you're aware of leap years happening. There are a few questions on lead code actually testing that. And that's just like a super good opportunity to showcase that you take a lot of care in what you do as a data scientist, even thinking about leap years. So in order to wrap this question up, we're going to wrap this code section in a subquery, call it movies and yeah, select title from the subquery. And yeah, similar to before, we will call this title results so we can append it easily as part of the output we're expected to use. We're expected to just return one column called results, which has the two results we're looking for. And in order to append the rows between each other, we can use the union keyword, which is not often used, but it's pretty much what you'll have to use when you want to append rows beneath each other. Yeah, so if you're combining columns, you're using joins. If you want to combine rows, you want to use union. Yeah. So I can just put the union keyword in here and it will combine these two queries. I could be absolutely sure by using union all here because in case the name of a person of the person that had the most movies rated and the name of the highest rated movie in February 2020. If those are the same name, the same string. So if there's a movie called Daniel, which was the highest rated on average in February 2020, then using the normal union keyword would break this because we would only have Daniel once as part of the output. Using union all will include duplicates. So even if that user and that movie had the same name, then we would still have two output rows, which is what we want. Yeah, so let's run this. Now make sure I don't have any typos in there. See whether it's accepted. Otherwise we'll have to hunt for things I forgot. In this case, I forgot applying limit one to the movie subquery as well, because we just want the highest rated movie based on that ordering and that should do the trick. Yeah, so let's accept it. Let's submit it to make sure it passes all test cases, even one that would test the leap year or the 29th of February, and that will be accepted. So I think that's a great solution, which takes care of everything. So we covered everything. We went through a few different sort of approaches for the date filter, and that should be it. So a great question to try. Make sure to give it a try on lead code if you want to. And otherwise, I'll be going through the rest of SQ50 here on this channel. So feel free to tag along, visit the playlist to find all of the different videos, and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.